All right, we're peeking out tonight. Kids in the Hood. A uh, pretty solid uh, capture the flag map with a funny little theme going on here. Um, if you couldn't tell, you know, it's supposed to take place in the neighborhood. Down in the neighborhood. Um, first thing you're going to notice is that it kind of looks both okay and kind of bad at the same time. And when I first looked at this, let me just get to the... I'll, I'll talk more about the actual map itself in a second. Let me just get over here real quick. It at first kind of looks tra like kind of trashy, like obviously like you know a lot of effort put into it. Um, and you might be thinking like, oh well, why did I say it looked good? Um, it's because you slowly realize that this entire map, um, best I could tell, was made entirely with the fault Half Life and Team Fortress Classic assets. And you know a neighborhood kind of like you know rural thing is not at all something that you know these games are made for. So the fact that they are able to convincingly pull it off. And, like, make it look, like, half-decent, I think, deserves a lot of credit. Besides, maybe, the, the skybox. I, I don't know why, like, we're in the middle of a desert. You know, that'd be probably the most sunny day background they had. And, you know, this... I, I didn't want to point it out right away, but, yeah, this this looks trash right here. You can't walk this way. There's an invisible wall. And, obviously, it's supposed to be, you know, the perspective is just... It's going down. There's more towns, like, houses that way. I would have honestly just had, like, a brick wall here nothing. I, I think that would be better looking, but oh well. Anyway, let's uh, actually go and showcase the map a little bit. So on both sides, you got a moat, which you can use to get under here. This is a really good way. I've talked about this with Chemfort. I like this idea of having a way to actually get behind the, easily through the main base. And so, like, you know, also, like, you know, some classes, like the heavy weapons guy and soldier are attacking here. The scouts and medic and, like, spy can be going through there. I like the little joke that it's because, you know, they kept the hose on. Um, so yeah, earlier, uh, I didn't mention that in order to, the flags are stored in the tree houses on each side here. So you gotta climb up. But again, I should be counting my blessings, even if you, like, I think counting up is still a little excessive. You know, at least it's not a later guidance system I gotta, like, press a button to turn off or anything. The houses are kind of fun. Again, default Half-Life asset, that door looks a little goofy. You get kitchens, and yes, you are supposed to be small, because remember, you're a kid in the hood. You know, it's a little... You're, you're a little bab still. You got some areas over here. Some of these are just goofy more than anything. Like the bathroom. Uh, there, there are health kits here, but, you know, obviously this is... I, I forgot about the window and the toilet roll here, so yeah, that's actually a good another good way to get in. This is where the genius of this map comes in, honestly, is that there's actually... A lot of different ways you can, like, you know, get into, the, like, the, the fort, which is, you know, like, to the flag and all around, which is something I really like. <coughs> Got your obligatory sniper area, which I like, um, because they put the moving trucks here. It's not, like, even though, like, I can see to the other sniper area, the ground troops, ground classes actually got, like, you know, some chance to get to the base before getting immediately shot. You got a little attic area over here. We're almost done showing off the map. So yeah, that's about wraps it up for the house itself. You got the moat I brought up. Um, and uh, yeah, you got the trucks, which you can go either way. So you got some options. You can get on top, obviously, if you go through here. And yeah, that's that's all she wrote. Good little map. Um, probably in terms of actual like strategy and stuff, one of the better custom maps I've ever played. You know, even though it might at times be a little bit too like you know cra like you know blocky for my taste. Rather, well, I, let me rephrase that. The middle area is a little bit too cramped, in my opinion. I like the idea of having the trucks provide some cover, but I wish there was a better way to, to implement that. But besides that, the rest of the map is a slam dunk, as far as I'm aware. There is one fault, too, is that the boss sometimes acts a little bit goofy um, in the spawn area here. And as you saw there, if we're not careful, you can get killed by the door. I almost did. Um, so, when the match starts, yeah, expect quite a bit if you're playing on a full server of, uh, you know, spawn, like, telefragging or, like, you know, spawn killing. It gets better, though, as the match, like, goes on and, like, you know, people will start spawning at different times. Minor complaint, but, you know, it is what it is. I forgot to actually cross it up there.
Yeah. I would have just not had the door at all, in all honesty. You could argue then, it's like, well, then the people that are spawning can see the enemy if they happen to be there, but that's like, you know, you could have fixed that by having the spawn to face another way. Oh well. Very, very minor complaint almost. Same idea, huh? Again, the, just the options that you have to get into the flag area here is incredible. And this is good water because I can see right through it. There's just not, not a lot of stupidity going on with the map design here. Like, you know, I play a few of the custom maps I've played on, I've certainly enjoyed. Besides the door here, this is the, the, the stupidity the map got condensed into that door there. Um, you know, I've enjoyed several of them, but there's been some, like, you know, uh, what was that one we just played, uh, Test of War? Where, you know, like, the central area is too cramped and it's hard to actually get to the enemy base. That, you know, inhibit, like, the... The, the strategy element of the map and stuff like you know a lot of the team like trying to work together aspects of the map get like you know a little bit like you know lost because it's like well there's only so many options you can take this kind of map though when you really break it down look at it and it gives you just so much to work with and there's just like it's designed even just having the water be see-through lets me like decide ahead of time when i want to depart it's just, there's nothing stupid besides the spawn door there. And maybe the trucks a little bit, but oh well. are kind of stupid on this map though but that's not that's not obviously not the map designer's fault at all it's just you know an observation like it's funny because the waypoint seems pretty good like they like they know how to get around most places but they just can't get it together to get through a door dang it kids trying to like you know all the neighborhood kids got together and formed into like a coalition of two different teams and like they decided or wrong word choice of word the, the, the neighborhood kids got like grouped themselves into two different teams and like they they got to go like get the other team's flag and stuff like that okay my question is what what what, what where did this flag come from what what possible value does, do these flags hold over these children because obviously they're supposed to be playing as kids just judging by our size but the bigger question is, is, where the hell did we get these weapons? Like, are our parents just really liberal about what they buy us for Christmas here, or what? Like, obviously I'm not, I'm reading, looking for meeting when there's probably absolutely none, but, you know. I'd be interested to see what the author's take on the whole situation was. Like, you know, it's probable that they just wanted to make a map, ba like, you know, based off of, like, a rural neighborhood, because why not? It's a cute idea. You know, it's like, you know, it's something you don't see too often. More so back in the day, especially with the limited graphics before this. But you know, still. Oh. 
Like, again, that's another thing I understand why. It's probably just the author, like, you know, again, was it using entirely stock assets from the games that this is based on? And, you know, there's only so much you can do. But, like, are we... Oh, you know, I'm stupid. We're just... We're, the idea is we're just moving in. I guess that's why the trucks are here. But then, but then why are they empty? And where the hell is everything else? So many unanswered questions that my feeble mind cannot comprehend. I'd be doing that all the time, considering I've been play. I almost exclusively play as the medic, but you know, you know, that's that's this game for you. This is I'm not everyone that plays this game still. I guarantee you, if they're playing medic, they're doing exactly what I'm doing, just being an offensive class. That's how it's always been. The difference is, is that they don't suck at the game. Sticky cushions there. Must be the new fad in this neighborhood. All the neighbors will be talking about it and be envious of our pillows. <laughs> Ooh. 
Also, the door just claimed another victim. Fast and determined. Well done, friend. Jumping at the corner here. Is this what the cool kids are doing? Is that what they do before they go home and play on their Commodore Amigas? Christ. <laughs> Anyway, that didn't matter anyway, that was Kids in the Hood. One of my favorite uh, maps I've showcased so far on here, both aesthetically and in gameplay. It's just really solid all around, highly recommend. 
Besides the door.